everybody. Uh, I'm going to be opening a brand new tandem 42 meter uh, core wing uh, today for my intruder. Uh, that's the same wing that I flew when I was in California. Another video that I put out where I was flying a 36. Uh, I'm a little overloaded on that wing with the weight of the intruder, myself, fuel, the wing, all of that. So it was, it was a little, uh, a little faster to take off, a little more responsive too. Um, I guess you could say like uh, my buddy Joe Cruz. What's up, Joe? Uh, he says uh, the wing's a little spicier when you uh, when you overload it like that. So and this uh, this wing is. So what I've got here is a 42 that I'm going to be opening to go along and I'm going to start doing uh, more of these videos because I know that this sport paragliding whether it be foot launch wheel launch uh, whatever I know that uh, it's really growing quick and there's a bunch of folks that want to get into it uh, I have been wanting to get into it for years and uh, my story here, let me show you guys here there it is so got the or it's a 42 all right, let's get this out of here. There it is. Comes with a stuff sack, compression strap, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so, but uh, anyway, what I wanted to, I've been wanting to get into the sport for quite a while. And I've got a, a pretty good story about getting into the sport. The folks that I've worked with, dealt with um, for the past couple of years. And so uh, I'll share that with you guys in some videos, maybe a little bit in this one, but I want to do a few where, uh, you know, while I'm up flying and you guys are getting to see some of the, some of the pretty scenic stuff around here that, uh, you know, you could kind of get to know where I'm coming from, what I've been doing uh, and how I arrived at this point, finally, after a long time. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Let's start opening this up here. All right, there's one of my risers. It's a very nice. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start getting these lines sorted out a little bit. So you can see here, I'm going to start with my brake lines, pull those down a little bit, all right, we'll work our way up. This, this wing has, right here you can see, this wing has split A's, so it uh, makes it easy for, uh, easy for big ears to pull those to have a little quicker descent, cut through the air a little quicker. But uh, these do have split A's on them, so you have your A's, your B's, your C's. Then you actually have your D and then your brake line down here. So what I'm going to do when these are clear, instead of pulling it all out, I'm just going to see if the wind will help me a little bit. So we'll look at this one. All right, you can see we have a little twist right there. So we're just going to spin it over. All right. start with my bottom lines make sure our A's are on top and they are I'm just gonna take the center okay so instead of taking our tip our a tip down there I'm gonna take our center A's and I'm gonna use that to help pull uh, pull some of this up so what I'm gonna do down here, we're gonna grab by our brakes, all right? We're gonna get our Ds and our brakes. We're gonna hold those with one hand. We're gonna take our center, all right? We're gonna start giving a little bit of pressure to it and see if how we're kind of lined up with the wind here. And uh, I'm close, I'm a little bit off, but we're gonna pull just a little bit and see how this, uh, how this responds right here.
There it is. All right. So that was very, 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 very small amount of pull there from me. All right. So what I'm doing is uh, giving a little bit there with my center A's, keeping my hands on the brakes. And uh, if the wind does gust, which with this storm, it very well could. Uh, and uh, I'm not here to kite this out here at this point other than just a little just to get it in the air because I'm excited about seeing it um, But if things do start to go wrong Just let go of those A's hold on to these brakes down here uh, And it's gonna come down never want to get into a harness until you know what the winds doing and that you can handle uh, You can handle the wing because you don't want to go for a ride all right And the wind is gone. The wind is gone away. So one of the first things with kiting on a day like this where the wind's kind of variable uh, and gusts get a little bigger, is when you do get one, practice centering yourself into the middle of the wing and then uh, practice building a wall and seeing what it feels like under pressure and, uh, and getting used to feeling where the wind is coming from behind you. So you can see the top of my wall is, uh, we got it pretty straight. So we're centered. My back's directly into the wind. If I just move one step, not even a step, half a step. See that right side went higher? Okay, go back to the center. Go to the left. See? So when you see that, before you take off and launch, if I take off, and I want to launch and that right side's higher because I'm not in the wind. Well, that right side's going to speed up and the whole thing's going to come up, is going to come up sideways. There goes the wind. Uh, it's going to come up crooked and it's going to take a lot more to adjust and straighten that wing back out. Whereas if you make sure you're straight to start off, you're going to have a lot simpler time doing it. So building a wall, learning to fill the wing, learning to step right, left, make sure that you're centered uh, is really important. And then when you pull up, uh, again, you can see I'm hand kiting. I've got my center A's in one hand. I have my D's, my brakes uh, in my other hand. And to me, now I know some guys that do it, that of course do this really, really well. But to me, this is the most complicated way to kite. If you're in a harness, to me, it's just a, it's a hundred times simpler. Uh, so much easier to control the wing. But when I'm trying to steer this wing using my brakes, Okay, my, my rotation and the amount of movement I have to pull the wing one way or the other uh, is decreased quite a bit because I'm just pulling side to side. Whereas normally I would be pulling straight down and putting uh, more authority on that side of the wing than just doing this. So when I pull it up, you see it go to one side, you see me try to steer it back. And uh, while the larger the wing, the slower the response is, also I'm just not getting enough travel out of that movement to give a strong enough input. So that's why, to me, this way really is uh, the most difficult way uh, for you to, to kite a wing, but at the same time, it's very crucial because you're really feeling the wind. You're not committed by harnessing yourself in and attaching yourself to a wing. You still have an easy way out and you still have decent control, just not quite as good with the, with the, uh, the steering on it. So, um, this is a very, uh, very important thing to do. Not an easy thing uh, by any means. So if some of you guys are just starting out and you're trying to hand kite like this and you've seen guys that have been doing it for a lot longer than I have, uh, don't get discouraged because they started, they started just the same uh, as what you're doing right now. And it was, it was difficult for them to believe it or not. We're having fun. And that's what it's all about. 
come up nice and easy. We're gonna let it go. Let's go a little more. There we go. And we'll try to steer it a little. All right, there it was. So it got to it. You can see our wind just changed. Nice. All right. There it is. So I know that uh, I'm sure some people will comment on the power lines that are right behind me here. But uh, again, they're going to have soccer games starting. This was not for me to come out here and try to jump around and catch any air and fly. So just to open it and uh, check it out. And if, uh, if anything were to go wrong, all I would do is let go of one of the risers. And wings can't fly when you're holding just one riser. So I would just let go of my riser and let it fall straight to the ground and rosette it up. Uh, so I'm not, since I'm not harnessed in, I'm not in any danger of going into that power line because I know I'm going to let go and I know what I'll do. A little bit easier wind there. There we go. Nice. I think it's a pretty wing. Just thought about it, that other camera is getting the back of the wing, which I guess might look cool. I don't know. I'll have to see when I start editing it there we go all right so what we're going to do is we are going to rosette this up and every time i say that that's when some decent wind starts <laughs> starts blowing around all right that's okay let's go so take my risers let's put them together all right, and as we come up here, we're just gonna take and make our, make us a little loop. If it was stronger wind at the beach or something, I would take and uh, actually turn sideways to the wind, but we're pretty okay here. Not too bad. It is hot out here already. It's only about, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 in the morning, something like that. And it is already 90 something degrees out here. Hot, hot, hot. All right, we're gonna lay that on there, right on top. I'm gonna put my lines down. I'm gonna take the ends of my riser and I'm gonna feed them right through the other one. That way they don't twist while they're in there. All right, I'm gonna lay them down here. And once you get used to the way you do it, I always put my risers this direction underneath the bottom. So anytime I open the bag, I can spin it. I know right where, right where I am. All right. So here it is. So we're gonna get that thing in the bag there. Ready? And what I do is grab the cells, the rods in these cells here, and you just grab a few of them, a couple of them at a time, start pulling them over. Okay, like that. So we get to the end there. Okay, there you go. It's the great pumpkin. 